Hey there. Today we're going to do a review of sorts on the Mesort motion detection night vision fisheye camera. It's a security camera. You can find them pretty much anywhere online. Um, Amazon, eBay. They're relatively inexpensive. Under $60. They're usually landed. And, um, they're a decent little camera. Uh, they are quirky and kind of difficult to get rolling at first. Uh, there's a lot of complaints about them on the internet and most of it has to do with its connection to the app, which I myself have had a lot of frustrations with. It was really hard to get to figure out and I actually even had it boxed up and ready to return. Um, had the return authorization number and it was boxed up. All I had to do was put the final tape on it and get it to the courier. I decided to give it one more shot. Uh, one, because I wanted a camera that worked, and two, um, I don't like to give up on things. So, anyway, um, I'm kind of glad I did. It was the final time I tried it, it actually worked. I had to uninstall the app, which I'd done several times. But when I reinstalled it, I set up a whole new um, account with within the app and that seemed to fix it and it popped up and came up just fine so it is a 2G or 3G camera it will not work on 5G networks it does connect to your home Wi-Fi but it's not easy to do at first it's, it's kind of complicated it um, has to work off a smartphone and your smartphone has to have a plan that connects to the internet cannot be using your home internet when you connect to the camera. It can't do both at the same time. So in order to set it up, you have to use your cell phone Wi-Fi and not your home Wi-Fi through your cell phone. That is probably the biggest hurdle that people have trying to get it to work. Once it's all set up, it's relatively straightforward. It comes with the small micro USB connection, standard for most Android stuff. On the other side, next to that, is the micro SD card, and it comes preloaded with a 32 gigabyte micro SD. Um, it's flush mount, so it can be a little tricky to get in and out. Fortunately, you don't have to do that very often. Um, I've never had to do it. I do it just to check it kind of a thing, but I don't have to. Um, there's a QR code on the back of the camera, which does lead you to the app. And I found that most of the QR codes on the box and on the camera itself lead you to an app that is strictly in Mandarin Chinese. And that makes it difficult to use because, well, I don't speak Mandarin. So um, you can go on the Google Play Store and find the app for it that is in English. Um, that said, it is probably written by somebody who has English as a fifth or sixth language. And while it is possible to, it is possible to read it, it is written not in what you would normally understand English. It's it's possible, it's easy to understand, but it, it's not regular. So it's doing its its connection. It's going to run through that. The speaker is loud, and there is no volume control, so you get one sound, loud. And the speaker is not overly high quality, so don't expect. It don't expect too much. It has two-way audio, which is kind of nice. You can speak to your pets or warn somebody off. It has an alarm, which is really loud. Uh, so if it's triggered by the motion sensor and you have it turned on, it will sound an alarm. For, and send you a notification on your smartphone, as well as... as well as record if you have it recorded or take a snapshot if you have it set to that. So it's going to go through one more sound here. And connect. <clears throat> now that's pretty much done. So anything from now on you can access it through your phone. Even if you're on the regular Wi-Fi at your home once it's connected, it uh, has no problems with that. But it will require during the setup, it requires you to use your cell phone Wi-Fi. Uh, the QR code on the box, like I said, it doesn't provide product information. It does provide you with a link to the app. 
Uh, <laughs> if you've seen the other videos online for this, the guy, one of the only ones I found, the guy was incredibly impressed with the box. Uh, I'll give it, it is a nice box, but I probably would have rather had them put more quality into the camera. Sorry, it's pretty hard to see that uh, through this camera, so we're not really going to worry about that too much. Um, in the box, you do have your standard user manual, and it is sparse in information. It gives you some information. It is kind of, it's written in a fairly decent English. Uh, you can understand it, but it, it's sparse. It doesn't really provide you with much in the way of troubleshooting or how to connect it. it it's kind of like it assumes that you already know and it should be, forgive the term, idiot proof, but it's not. It is, it, it can be tricky to get it set up. And for every five people who like it, you'll probably find another five or six that had problems with it. But that's kind of the reason I'm doing this, is so that people can figure it out and not have to send it back. Because, I mean, let's face it, everyone likes to save a buck, and if you can save a buck on a, a simpler, cheaper camera, why not, right? So, it is a great camera once you get it set up, if you can get through that hurdle. The does connect to your Wi-Fi, like I said, at home, once it is set up to do so. The phone features for it are they're very touch sensitive, so any slight touch on the screen can turn the camera angles and the fisheye part of it uh, very fast, so it takes something else to get used to how to do that. You have to do it fairly slow and whatnot, and just because you swipe right doesn't mean that it's going to go right. It could zoom in, zoom out. It, it kind of depends on which angle the camera is turned. Also, I found that the orientation on the smartphone itself is tricky. Uh, sometimes it just wants to stay upside down. Even if you have it tilted, set to the 180 or on a different view, the camera, even if you switch your turn your camera, it goes right back to upside down again. And I have not really figured out a way around that. Um, that said, I mean, it is what it is. It's a cheap camera. It has a lot of cool features. It has quirks. If you want something that is probably easier to use and whatnot, then that's why you spend the bigger bucks and buy something that is more user-friendly. If you're trying to keep on a budget, well, you, the old saying, you get what you pay for, but that's kind of it. You get a discount for the frustration factor on this camera. And after you get through that frustration factor, it is a decent camera. I like it, it works, and I'm really happy with it. So, along with this, I'm going to include some screenshots that I have taken of the camera in action, different angles, different features it has, right off the smartphone, and that will accompany this. And if you have any questions or comments, let me know, as always. Uh, please hit that like and subscribe button. With YouTube's new rules and stuff, the small creators now, we really need it. Without your subs, we kind of fade away, and you're left with the guys who were doing the silly stuff, and PewDiePie, and all those, so you find a lot less tutorials and relevant things to your day-to-day -day life, as opposed to uh, mindless entertainment and whatnot. So, while both are important, the little guys need your support. So, hit that subscribe button, and thanks for watching. Have a great day. Okay, now on to the app portion. This is what it looks like when you're viewing it from your smartphone. I have set it up over top of a couple of Lego scenes, one with South Park, the other is Rick and Morty. Uh, it's kind of what I had around, but the proportions will be the same. If it was mounted on your ceiling, you would see pretty much like this, just uh, a wider angle because of the distance away from the objects that you're viewing. The, screen resolution and everything else would be pretty much identical. Uh, probably not as colorful unless your room is set up like a cartoon. Um, it has a lot of different features like from cylinders to spheres to the fisheye, rectangles. Uh, you can zoom in and out, spin it, um, change the orientation so it would be like you're standing in the room, much like Google Maps or Google Street View, uh, that kind of thing. 
features you wouldn't really expect on a camera so inexpensive. Um, I think the reason it is inexpensive is the interface between the app and the camera is difficult to set up. Once you have that set up though, you're gold. I mean, there's a few kind of tricks that I've put in the video that you can use to avoid those pitfalls. And like I said on the video, the most common problem and frustration with this camera is the connection with the app to the camera. Once you get past that, it's great and people rave about it. The ones who are giving all the rave reviews are the people who didn't have the problem connecting the app to the camera. Other than that, it's worth the money. I would recommend it to pretty much anybody, um, despite having gone through what I went through to get it working in the first place. But um, there's not really much I can describe about what I'm doing here because you can't actually physically see the buttons I'm pressing to get to where I'm going on the, the screen. But you can see what's available, what it can do, it kind of gives you an idea and see if it'll fit your application or if it's something you're interested in. I hope it's helped you out and I'm going to leave you with that. Thanks for watching. Take care.